Okay, folks. Uh, thank you very much for your patience. Um, and obviously, welcome. Welcome to the uh, monthly edition hosted by FX Street. Um, what's, I, I'm going to do everything purely off the charts, uh, just for a slight change. I've, usually, I've got uh, several PowerPoint presentations and various things. It doesn't really get the message across sometimes, so I'm going to be doing as much as possible uh, via the charts. Again, just the easiest way to, to illustrate things by showing you uh, on a live chart usually rather than showing you a static chart of the slide. So just a slight variation in the usual format uh, for some of the more formal presentations that I usually do. And again, it's all going to be chart-based this week, so uh, nothing from a PowerPoint uh, or a slide viewpoint. So what I'm going to be talking about in the first part, again, for most of you who have attended uh, these sessions regularly, it's probably not going to be too much of a new revelation for you, but the second part, uh, I'm going to be going into a lot more detail of the strategy side of basically putting all the essentials, uh, all the essentials that I talk about into basically into practice. Some things that I do want to um, uh, talk about is just basically just to highlight the the, the tools that I use. I, again, I'm not using any mystical magic. There's nothing. Um, again, revolutionary about what I do. I'm just using very, very simple tools, you know, basic analysis tools, um, and applying them in a consistent and hopefully logical fashion. The only tools that I use, very simply, horizontal support and resistance and Fibonacci, Fibonacci retracements. That is all I use. Horizontal support and resistance. Um, and what you can also see marked on my charts here is uh, current days highs, current days lows, and previous days highs. These solid red lines here, they're previous days highs. That's automatically done uh, by my charting software. Again, all I'm using is very, very simple analysis. Nothing complicated. There's no multi You don't have to be a guru in mathematics to understand what I'm doing. It's a very, very simple concept, and I'm using the very basics of technical analysis to trade consistently and successfully um, and ultimately make some money. Right, so now that the preamble's out of the way, uh, let's really get into the, uh, the grit of it again. I'm going to literally start at the beginning in, in this part one, and then go into a lot more detail uh, through the session of precise trading strategies. Most of you may be thinking, well, hold on, Phil, let's just cut to the chase and tell me about the trading strategy. The strategy is, is irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. It's what leads up to the entry method that's most important to me. So you may think that having an entry method um, is the be-all and end-all of trading. And again, one of the things I want to try and stress is that it is not the be-all and end-all um, just having an entry method. You do need uh, a logical process that leads up to that entry method. Then after that, it's the trade management and how we're actually going to do that. So some of the essentials that I need to uh, just mention, uh, mention about are things like uh, trade potential. One of the things that is critical to how I go about a day-to-day day-to-day -day trading activity. The trade potential for me, let's just jump on to a uh, daily chart. The trade potential is based off an average true range, average true range. So what I've got on the screen at the moment is we can see a daily chart of a, of, um, at a pound against the dollar. And one of the things for day trading I want to assess is, is there potential is there potential for this particular cross rate to move today? That's what I'm looking for. Is there any potential? So based on an average true range, it's basically just the average number of high, the average of the highs, the average of the lows, added them together, divided by the number, and that shows me an average true range, the average rate, high low range uh, for the day. So my expectation is based on trade potential, which is based on an average true range. Now I'm using a daily 100 periods average true range. Now, for most trading platforms, for most trading platforms, it comes as an indicator. It's a statistical indicator. And it comes in the form of this. And you can just see it at the bottom of the chart. It comes as a line function. So what I can see, the figure that I'm most interested in is this last figure. And you can see here, 360 by the uh, where the cursor is. So 360 points is what it does on average. The average high-low range over the last 100 days is 360 points. Why is that important? 
if today's already done 300, let's just say it's done 300 points, that means that the potential for the day is only going to be 60 points. So what I need to refer that back to is my objective for, for intraday trading. My objective, again, thinking about this as a business, because this is a business, my objective, all businesses have a trading plan, an objective to, uh, uh, for trading. So my objective for day trading is to capture as much as possible the main move of the day. So if the main move of the day or the majority of the main move of the day has been done, then there's no potential. Now, obviously, we can see more than an average day's move. We can see less than an average day's move. But on average, it does an average day's move. So if there's no potential or reduced potential for the day, typically, I'll step, regardless of the pattern that develops, I will typically step aside from trading that particular crossroads. Does that make sense so far, folks? It is quite, quite a simple concept, but quite important. Yes, no, maybe? Everyone happy with the concept? Thanks, Holly. So let's put that into something uh, that's uh, visual. So going back to a 60-minute chart now on the pound, again, on the pound-dollar chart doesn't really matter. Uh, but so on a 60-minute chart, this tool that I'm, this tool that I'm dragging around, the, all this is, this is a customized Fib retracement tool. The distance between the two green lines, the distance between the two green lines is an average day's move. So the, there's four lines on it, and I've got, uh, depending on which way you're looking at it, from the bottom up, it's the zero line, 35, 65, at 100%. And obviously, vice versa, the down top line, zero, 35, 65, at 100%. They're, they're all the same figures. But what it shows me is the distance between the two green lines is the distance of an average day's move. So it's important to me because if price has done an average day's move, my potential for the day is dramatically reduced. In some cases, it's going to be zero. But certainly, as price goes through 35, sorry, 65 percent of an average day's move, I'm really thinking twice about the trade because the potential to capture my objective, and my objective is to capture an average day's move, that potential is gone. That objective can't be achieved. So a very simple concept and a very powerful tool. So very, very quickly, just going to start off on the left-hand side of the chart here. Uh, there's solid red lines, uh, just for your reference again are the current day's highs and lows for the particular day. And again, this is a 60-minute chart. So just dragging that down on to the higher of the day there. Again, we can see 65% average day's move. Price is usually slowing down. Price did the majority of an average day's move. Looking at the next day, price put in about 80% of an average day's move. What did price do? Stopped. Price did 100% of an average day's move. What did it do? Price stopped. Price done 65% of an average day's move. Price didn't really do much, much else. Price again did about 50% of an average day's move in this case. Again, quite a narrow day, um, but uh, you know the majority of the day is done. About 90% of an average day's move. What did price do? It stopped. In this case, obviously, it retra retraced almost 100%. Price put in just more than an average day's move, about 120% of an average day's move. What did it do? Once price has achieved an average day's move for about five hours, it just consolidated. Why am I showing you this? Because typically when an average day's move is done, price will stop. So if you're looking at a movement that's happened or movement that's developing and price has put in an average day's move, what do you think the probability of that being a successful trade will be? Will it be a high probability or a low probability? It's going to be a low probability. It doesn't mean that it won't be a successful. It won't, doesn't mean that it won't be um, an unprofitable trade because you can ultimately still make money but with the objective to capture an average day's move that's gone that's already happened so if I'm going to trade after an average day's move has been done or after 65% of an average day's move has been done then I need to see a more significant retracement to give me back my profit potential and as we can see price you know we've seen Average day's moves uh, done and exceeded several times in one day recently, particularly with the uh, financial crisis that's uh, going on at the moment. You know, we can see an average day's move down, an average day's move up, and an average day's move down. We can see that three, four times in a day, particularly um, uh, September, October, November time last year. We were seeing that on a regular basis. Average day's move up, down, up, and down again. 
we would see plenty of trade opportunities. Not necessarily, Mike. I mean, if you look at some of the, the trade and opportunities that have developed today, and again, we'll come, we'll look at some of these, uh, uh, look at some of these as well. The question just for, uh, for your reference was, so this forces you to only trade in the morning, and uh, the UK morning. Not necessarily, not necessarily, because what we can do is, or what we can end up seeing is that some of the trade opportunities that are available, they might not present a trade opportunity until later on in the day. Again, yesterday was a pretty good example of that, where it was quite a long time before some of the cross rates started moving. And it was late on in the UK trading session that those movements eventually developed. And we didn't see those movements until near on the end of the UK, UK uh, session. So potential, very important, very simple at the same time. So basically, if an average day's move has been done, or the majority of an average day's move, the majority of an average day's move will be as price exceeds 65%, I will certainly think twice about the trade. If 100% has been done, I'm stepping away. I'm waiting for a better trading opportunity. As simple as that. It literally is a good uh, indication of when to trade and when not to trade. If an average day's move has been done, no trade. Wait for a better opportunity. Wait for a more significant uh, retracement. 65% um, uh, from the high or the low of the day, depending on whether you're looking for a long or a short. To answer the question that was repeatedly asked, um, when does the day start? The day starts at, you know, between 10 and midnight, depends on your charting provider. Work with, with the data, with the platform that you have. If your charting starts at midnight GMT, work with that. If it starts at 10 o'clock PM GMT, use that. It doesn't make too much difference. Just have some faith in the tools that you're using. So the, I, I think Andrew's hit the nail on that. Yeah, it's, it's a reference point. It is a reference point. Right, so that's uh, average days move, folks. Question. Uh, if uh, uh, the dark night, uh, how do you calculate the average day's move? If you uh, insert an indicator on your chart, on, a, on your daily charts, um, it's called an average true range indicator. At a very basic level, it's the average of the highs and the average of the lows. The distance between the average highs and the average lows is your average range, your average high-low range. Uh, um, what's custom fib setting? Again, I think you missed the points with custom fib setting. It's just the distance between the zero and 100% line is the distance of an average day's move. So the difference between the zero and the 100% line, if that's 300 points on an average day's move on the cross rate, then the distance between them needs to be 300 points. Just gives you a visual reference. No, no, I just uh, a question from Harley. Using the 15 minute charts, uh, do you use the ATR also? No, I just look at the daily average true range. You can use them on other time frames, and people do. Um, but if you use them on a 15 minute chart, you will get a 15 minute, let's just give you an illustration, it will give you a 15 minute average true range. So the average true range on the 15 minute chart, the average high low range uh, over the hun last 100 bars is 40 points. So you will see a difference average range based, and it's relative to the time frame that you're looking at. Right, okay, so if there are no more questions on average true range. Right, okay, so let's think about uh, the next part of my trading routine. Now, again, a lot of you might have heard this before, the next part that I'm talking about. And I'm basically going to be talking about price action. Again, you can't hear this too, too many times. You can't hear this too many times. Price action at its most basic level is this, through the price on the right-hand side of the charts, it is the price fluctuations, price fluctuations. Now, in its raw data form, that uh, price that's moving up and down doesn't make too much sense. So what we do as, uh, as human beings is we manage that data, that raw data, into manageable segments. Quite conveniently, modern technology does a lot of the work for us. So on a daily, daily chart, this is still a daily chart, so on a daily chart, every price fluctuation is represented as a daily bar. Every price movement is represented. And the high, the open high, low, and close is obviously illustrated. Similarly, for a 60-minute chart, it shows the 60-minute uh, segmentation, and it will show all the price movements within a 60-minute chart. Still in its raw form, it doesn't make too much sense until we start to put some kind of structural framework onto the charts. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at putting a structure onto reading price action, onto reading the charts. And for me... Um, reading price action the way that I'm going to show you, it means that I don't really have to worry uh, too much about a particular pattern's name 
Am I using Dow theory, GAN theory, Elliott wave? Is this particular pattern called a triangle? Is it head and shoulders? Uh, it, for me, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you call it because when price is making higher highs, higher lows, it's going up. When price is making lower highs, lower lows, it's going down. And when price is making neither new highs or new lows, it's going sideways. And it literally is as simple as that, folks. There's three ways the market can go. And again, the, the, the third and forgotten one is usually when price is range bound. Most people say that it's a, this is a 50-50 trade game. It's a coin toss. Price is going to go either up or it's going to go down. Well, that's true to a certain degree. But what a lot of people forget is that this market or any market can go sideways. So it's not exactly a 50-50 guessing game, if you like. You're either going to win or you're going to lose. It's either going to go up or it's going to go down because price can go sideways. So you've got a 33.3 recurring percentage chance of price going up, down, or sideways at any given moment in time on the chart. So what we're going to look at now is turning that raw data, this raw information, this raw chart, a clean chart, into something that's manageable, how we can actually read this and understand what's going on. So the first thing that I need to do is just put some definition. Let me just put candles on so it's a little bit more easier to view. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put some definitions on the price action to help us to interpret the, the three basic phases of what the market's doing. So a swing high and swing lows. When price is making lower swing highs, lower swing lows, it's going down. When it's making high swing highs, high swing lows, it's going up. When it's doing neither, it's going sideways. So what's a swing high? Let's put a definition on this. A swing high, for me, is a three-bar combination. It's a bar preceded, a swing high is a bar preceded and succeeded by lower bar highs. Three bar combination, everyone with that. A bar preceded and succeeded by lower bar highs. So it's a three bar combination. Conversely, for a swing low, a bar preceded and succeeded by higher bar lows. So I've now got a rule definition that identifies swing highs and swing lows. Does the chart set make any more sense? No, because what we now need to do is we need to look at when the market is making lower swing highs, lower swing lows. When it's making higher swing highs, higher swing lows. Let's just start off on the left-hand side of the chart. All I'm going to do is mark off each and every swing and high low combination. So I've got to again, start off on the left-hand side of the chart. So we've got swing high, swing low, swing high. Oops, just missed one out. So we've got swing low. Swing high, swing low. So say what we see. Literally, just say what you see. Higher swing high, higher swing low. Another higher swing low, higher swing high. Lower swing high, higher swing low. So at this point of the chart that I've marked up, price is making higher swing highs, higher swing lows. Let's mark off a few more. So again, say what we see. We've got higher high, higher low. Oops, sorry, I think that's actually a higher high. I think it's called that a lower high. So higher high, higher low, higher high, lower low, lower high. So from this vertical red, uh, this vertical line here, this is the first point in time when price goes below that lower swing low. And we'll go into more detail about what I term as a buy change when the direction goes from long to short or short to long. We'll cover that in a little bit more detail in a moment. But what is price doing? It was making higher highs, higher lows, but now it's making lower highs, lower lows, higher, uh, higher low, higher high, lower low, lower high. So this is the first point in time the price is making lower lows, lower highs. So at that point of the chart from where the vertical line is, price is going down. That's a fact. You can't deny that. You can't deny that fact. Price is making lower highs, lower lows. It's going down. That can't be denied. So again, when price is making lower highs, lower lows, it's going down. When price is making higher highs, higher lows, it's going up. Uh, sorry, question from the room. Uh, so if you don't get a consecutive swing high and swing low, you skip one of the swings. No, I mean, count them all. Did you see me ignore any of them? Sometimes you're going to get a swing high and a swing low, develop on an outside bar. An outside bar is a bar that engulfs the previous high-low range of the bar. So sometimes you can get these swing highs and lows all on the same bob. Say what you see. Higher low, higher high. Higher low, higher high. Lower swing low, lower high. So price is now going down. So if you were trading with the trend, 
would this be useful to you? Would it be useful for you to know this information? The phase of the market, is it trending up or is it trending down? Would that be useful to you? So let's uh, continue with the price action sequence. So again, price is making lower low, lower high, higher low, and a lower high. So price is making higher lows and lower highs within the previous swing low and the previous swing high. So now what we're looking at is a phase on the market. Let me just uh, scroll back so we can see what it would look like in real time. So price is making low, lower high, higher low, lower swing high. So at this point of the chart, price is making higher swing lows, lower swing highs within the previous swing high and the previous swing low. What does that look like to you? It's not making new highs on the move. It's not making new lows on the move. So it's range bound. Yeah, absolutely. Ed. So if price is range bound, we've now got the same definition. <clears throat> If price is making higher highs, higher lows, it's going up. Lower highs, lower lows, it's going down. When it's not making new highs or new lows, it's range bound. If you want to put the label on this, this is an asymmetrical triangle. Personally, I don't give two hoots what it's called. You call this a pink elephant for all I care. Yeah, absolutely trendsetter. You can call it a pink elephant for all I care. It, knowing the name of the pattern for me, and it took me a long time to get my head around this, knowing the name of the pattern does not make you a better trader. Knowing what to do with the pattern does. So price is range bound. So at this point of the chart, price, I appreciate we know what happens with hindsight, but at this point of the chart, you've now got a confirmed range. Price is making lower highs, higher lows within the previous swing high and the previous swing low. So if you're a range trader, if you're looking to trade ranges, if you're looking to trade ranges, would that be useful for you? So now you've got a very simple rule, de rule definition for when price is trending and for when price is ranging. And you can then apply your strategies accordingly. When the market's trending, that's the time to use your MACD. That's the time to use moving averages. Price is trending. I don't personally use them, but if you did, that's the time to use them. So when price is ranging, that's the time to start thinking about range trading strategies. Buy support, sell resistance, use oscillators. Would that information be important for you? Do you think that would be useful to know which phase the market's in? A uh, question from uh, Fab. Uh, can you still trade in the other time frames when it's range bound? Absolutely. We'll come on to that uh, later. We'll come on to that later, but yeah. Price can be range bound, for example, on the daily charts, but it can be trending on the, say, the 60 minute charts. For the most part of the beginning of, um, beginning of last year, Euro was in a very large uh, weekly range, very large weekly range. But on the 240 minute time frame, which is my typical higher time frame, price was trending up off support, down off resistance, up off support, down off resistance. It was still trending, but on the weekly charts, it was ranging. So we can still trade those, those, those same trending strategies and you can mix and match. The important thing is on the time frame that you're looking, that you're looking at, is that you can identify what phase the market's in. Right, okay, so price is ranging very briefly and uh, then continued its uh, downward momentum. Price making lower lows, lower highs. Once again, price made low, uh, low, lower high, lower low, lower high. So high lows, lower highs within the previous swing high and the previous swing low. Again, price is range bound. Now let's think about when the market turns. When does the market turn? So it's great knowing that price is trending. It's great knowing when price is ranging. But what about when price turns? How do you determine the first point in time that a new trend could be established? How do we determine that? Well, very simply, we can follow the same, the same rule definitions, the same, same, rule, the same rules apply. Let me just, uh, I've got some charts prepared. The same rules apply. Here's one I prepared earlier. Right, so the same rules apply. When price is making higher highs, higher lows, it's going up. When price is making lower highs, lower lows, it's going down. So the trend will change when the first point in t at the first point in time when price goes from making higher highs, higher lows to making lower highs, lower lows, and vice versa. From making lower highs, lower lows to making 
high high highlands. So what does that look like? This is what I call a bias change. Some people might know this is a one, two, three reversal pattern or a one, two, three pullback or a one, two, three Ross hook or trading the first pullback after the failure to make a new high or a new low. These are all the same name. Sorry, these are all different names for the same pattern. It's still the first point in time that price is changing from long to short. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, the earliest reference I can find for this pattern is, uh, is 1880, 1880, and it was described as trading the first pullback after the failure to make a new high. And this is basically your one, two, three pullback, one, two, uh, one, two, three uh, pullback, or one, two, three rock hook. So what does it look like? So over here, over here, a little bit of a difficult one to start with, and it's uh, deliberately marked off. So. From the left-hand side of the chart, price quite clearly defined. It's making lower highs, lower lows. It's a fact. But let's just say what we see. Lower swing low, lower high. Lower swing low, higher swing high. So price was making lower lows, and then it made a higher swing high. So basically for a long, the key is that higher high in the sequence. So if price then goes above that higher swing high, the direction will be up. So it's gone from making lower highs, lower lows, low, we've got a, a, a lower low and a lower high, all on the same bar, so low, lower high, lower low, higher swing high. The higher swing high is the key, and if price then goes above the higher swing high, the direction will be long. Fact. That's the first point in time that the direction has changed. Again, going through on the charts, so it literally is as simple as say what you see. Mark off the swing highs and the swing lows. We've got high, higher low, lower high, higher low. So we've got high, lower lower highs and higher lows within the previous swing high and the previous swing low. So price goes into a range. You've got range, uh, price moving beyond the range lows. Again, very short lived. But what we start to see again is that uh, a different variation of the, the bias change. Over here, the first one that we just uh, talked about or looked at, the higher high developed first before a higher low. Now, in this pattern here, we've got low, lower high, higher low. I've got the higher low first in this instance. So low, lower high, higher low, higher swing high. So if price goes above that higher swing high there, the direction will be up. And again, it's just resuming going up in this case. It's already been established as up. So again, say what we see. Higher low, higher high. It makes a lower low. So higher low, higher low, higher swing high. Lower swing low. In real time, you're looking at this chart. If price had gone below that lower swing low, price had gone below the lower swing low, you'd have a short direction bias. That didn't trigger. So until a new direction is established, the previous direction stays in force. Is everyone, up, is everyone there still with me on this? Does everyone understand the concept? I'm going to go through, through some more examples, but this is really the key um, and the core of everything I do. Any questions so far? Any questions? I've not got them all marked off, as you can prove. I've got the turning points marked off. High, what about the previous one, guys? You've got high, high, higher, low, higher, high, lower, low. If you want to be pedantic, still the same sequence. Yeah, that might be one way of viewing it. Uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce your nickname, Ior. Why not use trend lines? Interesting points. Trend lines are made dynamic. Is your trend line? Trend is up. Yeah? From trend line analysis, trend is up. Trend line gets broken. But hold on. Price action is telling me that the direction is still up. And it resumes that uptrend. So in this case, the trend line was wrong. So why not use trend lines? They're too dynamic for me, I find. Price action will tell you everything you need to know. Right, okay, let's uh, continue with this. The, the, the sticking point for most people is when the, uh, the change happens, when it goes from long to short or short to long. So again, just say what we see. High, a low, higher high, lower low. Price didn't go below the lower swing low. No direction by. So price is still in an uptrend. It has made a lower low movement and a lower swing low. But until a new direction is established, the direction is still long. A lot of people will probably be get, caught, get caught out trying to sell this. <clears throat> a lot of people are trying to get caught out trying to sell this. 
and then be shocked when it rallies. But price is in an uptrend. That's a fact. You can't deny this thing. It's in an uptrend. It is making high highs, high lows. So again, high high, high low, higher high, higher low, lower high, lower low. So what we've got there, oops, what we've got here, again, higher high, higher low, lower high, lower swing low. So if price goes below the lower swing low, I'll have a newly established direction to the short side. Now, when will this pattern void? So the next consideration is, well, what if the bias change doesn't trigger? When does the bias or the, the potential direction bias change? When does that potentially new direction, when does it void? So the next part is when do these patterns void? For me, the highest point of the pattern will void the, void the trade. So the highest point of the move is there, that last higher high. Higher low, lower high. Lower low is going to give me a new directional bias. The highest high on the pattern is going to void it. So not only, and we'll see this when we look at the trading, um, tra trading with this pattern. So just looking at this from a direction point of view at the moment, we can actually trade with the same pattern. And we'll look at that later as well. So when will the pattern void? The pattern will void when price makes new highs on the move. So high low, high high, uh, sorry, high high, high low, lower high, lower low. Direction bias very briefly established. Price makes a higher high on the movement. Price doesn't breach the higher swing high. It makes a lower swing low. So if you're trying to sell this, you'd be looking for shorts. Perhaps very brief thinking about longs as the potential swing high develops. As the swing high develops, price doesn't go above the high swing high and resume the uptrend. So what we see, higher low, higher high, lower swing low. So in this case, we get the lower swing low first. Lower highs developing, new direction bias is established. Uh, does it matter what time frame? Which I know this is this is literally um, price action, just reading basic price action, pure price action reading. And um, there's nothing more complicated to it than what I've described. It does take a little bit of practice to get used to, particularly the turning points. Particularly the turning points. And anyone who uses this uh, this this uh, philosophy, this view. Um, you know, you will you you can be very very successful just with this this alone. You can uh, turn this into a trading strategy, uh, very very simply. Um, and it it doesn't really matter what time frame you use it, and it'll work on 89 tick charts, which is what I use on currencies. One minute, five minutes, ten minutes, thirty minutes, an hour. We're looking at this on the 240. We've looked at it on the daily. It works on the weekly. It works on the Dow, the IBEX, the FTSE. Uh, it works on the S&P. It's price action. Very simply, when price is making high swing, high low, high swing highs, high swing lows, price is going up. Fact. When price is making lower highs, lower lows, price is going down. Fact. When it's not making new highs or new lows, it's range bound. That's also a fact. And these are quite clearly seen on the chart on any time frame that you look at. These are, you know price action facts that cannot be denied. Um, so uh, Ralph, uh, again, interesting comments. Um, understand the, the, uh, the, the bias, but determine how to use this for trade entries is what you find difficult. That's what we'll look at uh, again in part two of the, uh, the price action, uh, part two of the, uh, the training sessions. Um, There's exactly the same pattern, again, just for illustration. Exactly the same pattern. If you were looking, if you were looking at this on a lower time frame, again, just for argument's sake, say a five-minute chart, the same patterns develop and can be used. So this same pattern, the exact same pattern sequence, can be used for a trading opportunity. High, high, low, lower, high, lower, low. This is obviously one that probably would have stopped you out, would have got you in the trade, stopped out. Then you've got a second pattern that develops. High, low, higher, high, lower, low. So again, if you're on a five-minute chart. You've got one trade would have stopped you out. Second trade would have got you in the move. You would have made you, would have made you some money. It doesn't matter what time frame it's on. The same pattern presents itself. The same pattern. So from a trading point of view, entry below the lower swing low, stop loss past the event, the highest point of the pattern. Uh, right, okay, where were we? So price action, when it's making high highs, high lows, it's going up. It's making lower highs, lower lows, it's going down. When it's doing neither, it's going sideways. For anyone who wants to read a little bit more on this at your own leisure, there we go. So if you want to 
read up on this at your own leisure. There's obviously uh, an article on uh, if you follow that link. There's also some videos that goes through this uh, concept as well. So that's price action. That's price action and its base at level just to indicate direction. As I've uh, touched on briefly, you can use this, can use this to trade with. Can use this to trade with. Uh, and again, exactly the same way. If a short, the lower swing low that triggers the buy change, that would be my entry. And my stop loss would be typically past the event, the highest point of the pattern. So any questions uh, on this for the moment before I move on to the next next phase, next phase? Um, as far as I know, um, uh, Richie Raj, again, I'm sorry about the pronunciation, the nickname. Um, as far as I know, you're not going to find this in any book. People, what people, it's usually, this is usually a footnote in the annals of, of some textbooks. Um, and it's usually is when price is making higher highs, higher lows, it's going up, lower highs, lower lows, it's going down. But it never explains what that means. So what I'm doing is I'm explaining that little footnote that's in a lot of textbooks, what an uptrend looks like. We've got a rule, we've got a definition. What a downtrend looks like, we've got a rule, we've got a definition. And what a range looks like, we've got rules, so we've got a definition. So we now know the three ways that the market can go, up, down, or sideways. It can only go in one of those three directions. And now we know precisely which way it's going. It may be short-lived, it may be a long-lasting trend, but at the very least, we know which way the market is trending or not trending. Right, okay, so... Right, let's move on. Right, okay, so... Uh, presumably no questions, no questions so far, no questions so far. Uh, the Dark Knights, how do you know the direction has cha changed on the trend? I'll, I'll say it one more time. When price is making higher highs, high lows, it's going up. So at this point, where the cursor is that I'm just marking up on the chart, say what you see. Price is range bound. So we've got uh, a couple of, again, this is the most recent uh, part of the chart. Lower high, lower low, lower high, higher low. So at this point there, that vertical line there, that's the first point in time that price was showing as being range bound. It's making lower highs and higher lows within the previous swing high and the previous swing low. Price is range bound. Break out of that range, hold back. What's price doing? It is making higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, Lower high, lower swing low. When price goes below the lower swing low for a short, the direction will change. Fact. This is the first point in time. That's the first point in time there that price has changed direction from long to short. Does that make sense? Uh, the the dark night <laughs> seems strange calling everyone by their. Uh, the nicknames. Does that make sense? The first point in time that price makes lower highs, lower lows, it's going down. So say what we see. High, higher low, lower high first this time, lower swing low. So if price goes below the lower swing low, price will be going down. Um, do I enter uh, positions on the four hour charts or lower time frames? Typically, I take my direction off the four hour charts and I look for trading opportunities and position myself, even on a swing trade, off uh, an intraday trading opportunity. That's typically what I do. Although there's nothing wrong with trading off the four-hour charts. One of the things you need to consider when in, in, for your own trading is, don't. one of the most common questions I get asked is, what's the best time frame to trade? It doesn't really matter, to be quite honest. But rather than ask what's the best time frame to trade, because it doesn't make any difference, it all comes down to what your trading objective is. So think of it backwards. If you've got a full-time job or part-time job or you're working or you've got family commitments, rather than say what's the best time frame for me to trade, what time do I have available to trade? If you've got a full-time job and you know, you're, you've not got access to, say, a computer regularly through the day, then trading, you know, you might be able to check your charts for five minutes every hour on the hour. So realistically, your lower, your lowest entry time frame would be a 60-minute chart. You've got, you know, five, ten minutes every hour on the hour just to have a quick look at the charts. 
you couldn't physically trade any lower than that time frame. It would be impossible. And probably the 60-minute chart might be still a little bit of a struggle. So rather than think, what's the best time frame to trade? What time do you have available to trade? This pattern, these patterns that I'm, that I'm going to go through, these patterns that I'm, I'm talking through and I'm going through, these reproduce themselves on every time frame, on every market. Right, is everyone happy with the, the, the turn, the bias change, the one, two, three, four? This is really the sticking point. I want to make sure everyone understands this bias change part. Because if you're going to have problems with this, you will, this is the turning point is when you will have problems. But if you very simply just count the sequence of events, I can't really stress this enough. Say what you see on the chart. Mark off the swing highs, the swing lows. Particularly while you're learning, it's good to, to give yourself a visual reference. Say what you see. What is happening? High, 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 low, high, 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 low, high, high. Then we've got high, 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 low, lower, high, lower, low. That's short, opposite for long. Price is range bound, it's making high lows, lower highs within the previous swing and the previous swing low. Price is range bound. So if it's range bound, I'll be looking for a breakout of the range or I can start to apply ranging strategies. So again, just at the very basic level, we've got the price action sequence. When it's going up, it's making high highs, high lows. When it's going down, Lower highs, lower lows. When it's doing neither, it's range bounds. The turning point is when it goes from making higher highs, higher lows to lower highs, lower lows. The first point in time that it makes lower highs, lower lows, or lower lows, lower highs, is the first point in time of a newly established direction bias. Um, what was I going to say? We've also talked about um, average day's moves, average true range. This for me is uh, uh, quite uh, quite an, uh, quite a simple concept, but quite important. What I'm looking for is potential. Potential. I get asked a lot about risk reward ratios as well. Risk reward ratios. Um, look for trade of uh, you know three to one or two to one minimum risk reward ratio. Well, hold on. Risk reward ratio. It's for, me, for me again, quite a contrarian view. I'm not concerned with risk reward ratios on a pattern. What I'm looking for is, does the trade have potential? A lot of the patterns I trade have quite a low risk-reward from the actual patterns point of view. They've got a very low risk-reward ratio from the patterns viewpoint. The range breakout pattern, depending on how you manage the trade, the textbooks basically say it's a one-to-one -one risk-reward ratio. At worst, at best, it's a two-to-one risk-reward ratio for the range breakout pattern. Again, we'll go through that in just a moment. What I'm looking for is to use these entry patterns, these entry triggers, as a trigger into a larger movement. That larger movement is based on an average day's move. If an average day's move has been done, the potential to achieve my objective to capture that average day's move has been done. There is no trading opportunity. Wait for something better to come along. Uh, so is everyone happy behind the concept of some of the essentials? All I'm using is literally support and resistance, basic support and resistance. I'm using fibs, which we'll look at in the second uh, section. We'll look at the range breakout next. Um, and the, the price action sequence. This, the price action sequence, again, very important. It's the core of everything I do. So has anyone got any questions so far on what we've discussed? And then we'll move on to a strategy. How to use this price action sequence for a strategy. Questions so far? Questions? Uh, so question is, I keep a 21 and 5 day average daily range manually. What do you use to follow the average daily range? Um, you can use uh, a daily chart with an average true range indicator, as we said right at the beginning of the session. How do you trade in the range? Um, how do you trade in the range? It, it's Personally, um, trading a range from an intraday, particularly from an intraday viewpoint, it's not something I do. I usually step aside and wait when prices when prices range back. Um, let's just take a look at uh, very quickly. Let's just take a look at the daily, uh, sorry, the weekly euro. Let's go back to uh, weekly chart once. Actually, let's take a look at the monthlies, not weeklies. Uh, this is the uh, euro weekly chart. This is what I commented on earlier. Uh, you've got the high swing high there. High swing low, so you've got high swing lows, lower swing highs within the previous swing high and the previous swing low. So price is range bound and was a confirmed range bound uh, at the beginning of February. So February, 
and then to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 weeks. 14 weeks before it eventually broke out. So for 14 weeks, price was range bound on Euro. First part of last year from February. Price was range bound. If you look on the 60 minute chart or even the 240 minute chart, you will see price makes lower highs, lower lows down to support. Off support, making higher highs, higher lows. Retest the support, then higher highs, higher lows. At the 160 level, you will see price is at resistance. And then it starts making lower highs, lower lows. So I tend to do a range strategy more on the higher time frames. And there's not too much difference. I'm still trading a trend within the confines of a larger range. And I look for price to be at support or up at resistance to take on um, support and resistance, to buy support sell resistance. At a very basic level, that's how you can trade ranges. It's not something I do too often, certainly from an intraday viewpoint. Um, so let's, uh, let's be fair, let's move on. Let's uh, look at uh, trading breakouts, trading breakouts. Uh, Andrew, to be fair, do you see any Bollinger Bands on my charts? The question was, uh, how do results with the average true range compare with results with Bollinger Bands? Do you see any Bollinger Bands on the chart? There's no Bollinger Bands. What you're seeing now, folks, is this is exactly how I trade, exactly. I'm not holding anything back. There's no secret formula. There's no special indicator. It's just price action. What you see on the charts that I'm showing you right now, this is all I use. There is nothing else. There is a support and resistance line for the Asian range. The only reason why I've got some vertical lines on the 240-minute chart and some arrows on there is because I do daily trading sessions. And this is really for illustration. There is nothing else on my chart. Nothing. I just use horizontal support and resistance and one Fib retracement level. That's it. There is nothing else. And if you don't have um, access to 89 tick charts, uh, use a uh, two or a three minute chart. That will give you a similar effect. Preferably a three minute chart. If you don't have 89 tick charts. Right, okay, so let's move on. Uh, so time's pressing on. Actually, do you mind if we just, uh, if, could we just take two minutes, folks? We've got another 30 minutes to the end of the session. Could we just take two minutes? I just want to grab a drink of water. Um, so take two minutes and we'll start back. Uh, uh, I'll just grab a drink of water if you don't mind. Okay, thank you very much for your um, for your patient effort. I just needed to uh, grab a drink of water. My throat's uh, terribly hoarse at the moment. Uh, so, uh, um, firstly, thanks for your patience. Um, so, you back on the question: How do you use forex uh, trading sessions in your breakout trade? We're going to talk about breakout trading now. So, we've now armed ourselves with some uh, basic interpretation of the charts. We know about the potential, how to assess for the potential for the day. We know how to assess where the price is trending or where the price is ranging. And we can now think about how to put that knowledge into a strategy that can be used for trading. So one of the patterns I'm going to talk about, which has uh, developed quite a lot today actually, so we've got some really, really good uh, real-time examples of this from today. We're going to be talking about uh, breakout trading opportunities, breakout trading. So the first thing that I want to do is to be able to identify a range, but not just any range. I want to identify a range that has developed during the Asian session, the Asian session. So this is an Asian, basically an Asian session breakout method. So I'm going to look for an Asian session range within the overnight or the Asian session range. This, for me, offers, offers up uh, the best uh, risk-to-reward opportunity because during the Asian session, there's been typically and usually, uh, usually and historically a narrow band of trading activity. It's usually a period or the quietest period of the trading day, normally, normally. So usually during the Asian session range, price will consolidate usually in about 30 to 35 percent of an average day's move. So this offers about 60 to 65 percent as potential. Yeah, I appreciate not recently. It's, we've seen some uh, quite heavy volatility uh, recently. But normally, normally and historically, we will see a range uh, during the Asian session. So what, what is an Asian session range? So typically, I will look for 
let me just uh, go to a different chart. Typically, I will look for a range on the 60-minute chart. So I'm looking for a range on the 60-minute chart. So what does that look like? What does that look like? So let's just uh, zoom into the charts. So eight o'clock this morning, UK hours. What I was looking at was this. This is the picture I was looking at. And on most of the cross rates, this is the situation. Same price action definition. We follow the 60 minute chart down, price is making lower highs, lower lows. It's trending. Lower highs, lower lows. Makes a higher high, a few higher highs, but generally it is making lower highs, lower lows. So price has been in a downtrend the last three days. Price retraces, it makes slightly higher swing high, higher swing low, lower swing high, and then a higher swing low. So when you, when you see this higher swing low, so you've got a lower swing high and a higher swing low within the previous swing high and the previous swing low. Price is range band. It's not making new highs. It's not making new lows. If it's not doing either of those two things, it's range bound. So what I want to do is I want to mark off the extreme boundary of support and resistance. Now I was asked the question, I was asked the question earlier, why why don't I use trend lines? So this is more pertinent to this section of the presentation. Why don't I use trend lines? Because if I wanted to, uh, sorry, if I wanted to label this particular pattern, you might want to call this an asymmetrical triangle. And again, with trend lines, you can identify that. You've got that asymmetrical triangle. Personally, what I'm interested in is not what the name of the pattern is, but where support and resistance is, so I can trace the breakout of the extreme boundaries of support and resistance. So at this point this morning, uh, what, I'm, uh, what I'm looking at is effectively an asymmetrical triangle. Again, it doesn't really matter what it's called, and I personally have not got any interest whatsoever anymore about trying to name the pattern. Knowing the name of it, it's not going to make me a better trader. Knowing where support and resistance is within that pattern is going to be of significant importance to me. So what I'm interested in is the extreme boundary of support and resistance. If price is making higher lows and lower highs within the previous swing high and the previous swing low, price is range bound. I'm going to mark off the extreme boundaries of support and resistance. That is where price is contained. Fact. Until price moves out of those confines, price will continue to be range bound. So as the chart unfolds, why don't I use trend lines? Well, price can obviously break that trend line. He can get an earlier entry. Nothing wrong with that at all. But one of the things that uh, we can see, I'll try and find a, a more um, decent example there in a moment. But price can drift through the trend lines. Again, think about how the chart is constructed. Think about how the chart is constructed. On this time frame, I'm looking at a 60 minute chart now. Every 60 minutes, a new bar will develop, regardless of whether there's been any price movement at all. A new bar will develop. So if price is not moving, if price is literally stood still, in one hour's time, a new bar will develop. If price still isn't moving and it literally does not physically move, a new bar will develop in one hour's time. So price can effectively drift through just by the way that I cut the data up on the charts by looking at 60 minute charts. Price can move through the trend line without actually being a trend line break. Now another possibility, let's take a look at uh, Euro dollar for this actually. Another possibility is that price can evolve into something else. So again, we've got Euro dollar. Price made swing high, high low, lower high, high low within the previous swing high. So it made lower highs and higher lows within the previous swing high and the previous swing low. So again, why don't I use trend line? Personally, I find them dynamic, and I don't like using them because the pattern that I'm looking at, if I was to label this asymmetrical triangle again this morning, price action broke through the trend line. So would it be fair to say that the pattern has broke? The asymmetrical triangle has broken. 
And in theory, according to all, according to all the, um, the textbooks, you should be long on this pattern now. But what happens? Now, some people might argue, well, yeah, there's 30 points on offer there. You could have traded that up to the next level of resistance. Um, or with trade management, you would have stopped out, and it's a, or it's a false breakout. But with, at this point of the chart now, is that looking more like an asymmetrical triangle? So one of the things, one of the things that I find personally is that price can evolve into a differently named pattern, but still be within the confines of that extreme support and resistance levels. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, I'm looking at the extreme boundary of support and resistance. So for me, this is still consolidating. At this point, the chart is still consolidating, still consolidating, still consolidating. There's the breakout move, breakout, and price is just pulling back now. So the breakout level is through the extreme boundary of support or resistance. Typically, I'll identify a range on a 60-minute chart and look for this price action definition. Lower highs, high lows within the previous swing high and the previous swing low. That's my range definition. And if you look on any of the 60-minute charts today, uh, you will see pretty much exactly the same picture on most of the charts today. Most of the charts. So how do I trade this? So now with the price action definition, I've got that definition for a range. I want to see this consolidation, this range, the Asian session range. I want to see that in the top third or the bottom third of the previous day's high-low range. The, high, uh, the previous days you can see with these solid red lines. And these just mark off the previous day's high lows. So I want to see the Asian session range, the consolidation, if it develops, in the top third or the bottom third of the previous day's high-low range. So that's rule number one. So identify the range. Is it in a good location? A good location, top third or bottom third of the previous day's high-low range. If it's in the middle third of the previous day's high-low range, typically what will happen is an ex we will see an extended consolidation. And it's usually a good heads up. Um, a good early warning, if you like, to a potential larger consolidation that is yet to develop on the 240-minute chart, which is my higher time frame. So if the range, the Asian session range is in the middle third of the previous day's high range, it's a step-aside situation. And if that was the case, use the previous day's high-low range as my long and short trigger levels. Does that make sense? Everyone happy with the, the logic there? Let me just, I think we had an example yesterday. Let me just get you an example. No, just trying to remember where it was. Consequence. Right, so basically, identify the range, typically on a 60-minute chart. Is the range in a good location? I'm looking for that Asian session range at the top third or the bottom third of the previous day's high-low range. If it's in the middle third of the previous day's high-low range, I'm going to use the previous day's high-low range as my long and short trigger levels. So range, identify it. Is it in a good location? Yes or no? What comes next? We've already mentioned it, but what do you think would come next? I've identified a range. It's in a good location. What's next? So the very one of the very first things we mentioned. Um, there's a question there. So if price is consolidating in the middle of yesterday's high-low range, the chance of a breakout is low. It's not that the break is the potential for it's low. It's just, in my experience, what I've noticed is it, it typically and usually leads into a slightly longer consolidation. So you might see the breakout and it be very short-lived. So I'm trying to avoid false breakouts. By, wait, by looking for a range that's in the top third or the bottom third of the previous day's high-low range, what I'm looking for is an indication that price will continue. So, for example, if it's in the top third, typically this is a continuation pattern. I'm looking really for a breakout through the high of the range, which is usually the high of the previous day, and it's typically a continuation pattern. So price is already suggesting a continuation by holding the high of the day, being in that top third of the previous day. So it's suggesting a continuation by the location as well as the pattern itself. So I'm trying to put the odds slightly more in my favor of a successful trade. So by it being in the middle third, it's directionless. 
And if it's in the middle third of the previous day's high-low range, what you would usually see is it would, if you looked at the previous day and the Asian session range in its entirety, you would usually see a slightly larger asymmetrical triangle. Again, if you looked on that 240 minute chart, that's what you're preempting developing. So, range. Identify an Asian session range. This is for day trading, obviously. Identify an Asian session range. Identify the location. What's next? Does it have potential? Does it have potential? So based on, so this is where the average true range comes in. Does the day have potential to make me money? This is all about greed, folks. We're here to make money. Does this, does today have the potential to make me money? That potential is based on an average true range indicator. The average day's move over the last 100 days based on a daily chart. So this morning, we had about, on a euro dollar, we had a range that encompassed about 40% of an average day's move. So I've got 60% as potential. 60% as potential. It's got potential to get down to, based on an average day's move, 12800. That's going to be approximately where an average day's move will take me. So it's got potential from 12940 level down to 128. That 60% of an average day's move represents about 140, 145 points. So now it's starting all to come together. We've looked at the price action. We can use it for a direction bias. We can use it to identify day trading opportunities. We've identified the trade. How do we trade the break at this, this range now? When price is still ranging, it's a weight situation. Price is still ranging, it's a weight situation. Actually, let's take a look at the pound. That's developed quite nicely this morning. That's already uh, started to develop. So when price is, um, pound yen, sorry, pound yen. So when price is range bound, let's, let's think about the full picture on this. Price, again, it, you can pretty much pick most charts today. 60 minute chart, price making lower highs and high lows within the previous swing high and previous swing low. Price is range bound, it's in the top third of the today's high low range, in a good location. Price breaks through the low of the range. I'm going to trade the first pullback after the breakout move. So what I'm looking for, again, there's a couple of options on the, uh, the pound yen. A couple of options. So identify the range. Price making high lows, lower highs than the previous swing high and previous swing low. Price is range bound. It's in the Asian session range. It's in the top third of the previous day's high low range. I've got approximately, at the time of the breakout, I've approximately got as well still about 60% of an average day's move left. That 60% potential can take me down to 120, 120, 20. So about 230 point potential for the breakout trade. About 230 points. How do I trade that? I'm going to trade to enter into the market. I'm not going to, first of all, I'm not going to bracket the range. What that means is what most of the textbooks, if not all the textbooks say, is identify a range, place a, a sell order below and a buy order above, close your eyes and hope for the best. That's what all the textbooks say. Your risk is massive. Your targets, your risk reward is one to one. Based on an app, using this pattern as a trigger into a larger movement, I can maximize my risk rewards without even thinking about it. My potential is 220 points to an average day's move. That's what's left. That's my profit potential. So straight away, I know my reward potential is 220 points. Even if I have to take a 100-point stop-loss size, I've still got about a 2 to 1 risk-reward ratio. So without even having to think about it, the risk-reward ratio is taken care of. One less thing to worry about, one less thing to try and calculate in a real-time environment when the market's fast-paced and jumping back and forth without you. So one less thing to think about. Don't worry about it. The reward is taking care of itself all of a sudden. So breakout pullback setup. A breakout is a movement beyond support or resistance. 
we've identified the extreme boundary of support and resistance. So I'm looking for a movement below 122.56. When I see that breakout, or in this case break down movement, I'm going to trade the first pullback after the breakout move. For me, typically I enter on the 89 tick chart. So the first pullback, so we've got the breakout move here, breakout pullback. If you don't have a, an 89 tick chart that's uh, decent, use a two or a three minute chart. So breakout pullback setup. Entry is going to be, for me, 122, below 122.48. This was something that we traded this morning. For anyone who's in my, uh, from my room in here, you can testify. This is something we looked at in real time. Breakout, pullback setup. Very quick pullback. Uh, 122.48 would be the entry. So let's just recap this. Recap. So breakout move. So looking for a movement below 122.56. Price moves down, breaks through that 122.56. Going to go through this one bar at a time. Breakout. A pullback. What is a pullback? Everyone says trade a pullback. What is a pullback? A pullback is the first bar not to make a new bar low. Guess what another way of saying that is? It's a swing low. It's a bar preceded and succeeded by higher bar lows. We've already worked this out with the price action sequence. Can you see now how it's starting to fold into it? All these elements starting to fold into each other. I'm looking for a lower swing low on my entry time frame that's below support low. That is going to be my entry trigger. Breakout, pullback, entry below the pullback low. Uh, well done, Richard. Nice one. So 122.48. Now, typically, how do I enter? How do I enter? Typically, I use stop entry orders. That's my preferred method to enter the market with a stop entry order. So I'm going to enter below the breakout low. The lowest point of that breakout move, lowest point of the breakout move is 122.48 for me on my data. I'm going to enter at least two points below that level, at least two points low. So 144.46, at least two points away. My personal preference is to use the whole or the half numbers. So I'm going to round down. So 122.45 is my actual entry. 122.45. The stop loss goes past the highest point of the retracement after the breakout move. Now this is an unknown factor in real time as the chart develops. And on some of the more deeper retracements, the stop loss is undetermined until after, or it's not confirmed until after the trade is triggered. Although what we can do is we've got a good idea of where that uh, stop loss location is going to go. So entry below the breakout low, stop loss goes past the event that caused me to get in the trade. The event is the, is the pullback. So the highest point of the retracement after the breakout move. So stop loss goes above 122.59, at least two points above that, plus the spread. And personally, as I just mentioned, I like to round up to the whole or the half numbers. So 60, 65, 70, 75, just to give you an idea of what I mean by that. So above 122.59, plus two, plus the spread, I like to round up to the whole or the half number. So my stop loss is going to go at 122.70. By rounding up and down, it serves a few purposes. Firstly, it keeps the math nice and simple when I'm working out stop loss sizes, targets, etc. It gives me a little bit of flexibility on the if price you know triggers the pattern technically but it doesn't trigger the trade and if it just goes above like in this case it just goes above just goes above the the retracement high because this can happen sometimes as well it just stops me from getting stopped out prematurely or into a trade prematurely and obviously what we know is the results uh, it's something that's going quite well so we can see the same entry on the 15 minute chart as well, just for your reference. Breakouts, pullback setup. Entry below the breakout low, stop loss past the highest point of the retracement. Target in mind is an average day's move. So I'm looking for a target ideally down to 120.17. Oops. 120, 120, 20 approximately. That's the target I'm looking for. What if it doesn't get there? 
when price moves into 65% of an average day's move, again, we mentioned this earlier, average day's moves, when price gets into 65% of an average day's move, it starts to slow down. When it's done an average day's move, price usually stops. So we're into that zone of price having done the majority of an average day's move in this group. It's not done an average day's move yet, but it's done the majority of an average day's move. So what I'll start to do is what I call active trade management. So I'm not going to do anything now until price has got to 65% of an average day's move. Because I want to give the trade the opportunity to ebb and flow and fluctuate market noise, to move back and forth, and still give me the opportunity to capture an average, the main move today, an average day's move. Uh, Andrew, I actually do a little bit of both, which is what I'm explaining. The question was, um, why set a target rather than trail your stop loss? You can set a target to an average day's move, and you can literally operate a set and forget type of entry and trade management. Or you can do a little bit of both. So what I do is I set my entry. I've got a target level, which is 65% of an average day's move, to then start to manage the trade, physically manage the trade, start locking in some profits. So when 65% of an average day's move is being done, um, I will then start to lock in profits and I will trail my stop loss behind the second previous swing high. And I'm going to go to that in more detail on the second part of the uh, presentation, part two of the presentation. So I'm using a little bit of both. Rather than set a target to come out at 100% of an average day's move, I'm actively managing the trade and I will manage my stop loss from an intraday viewpoint. This gives me the opportunity to lock in profits if price doesn't reach 100% of an average day's move, and it also allows me to try and trail uh, in a logical and consistent fashion my stop loss when price exceeds an average day's move, try to take advantage of the low volatility days to lock in small profits and to take advantage of the high volatility days when price explodes. 65% uh, of an average day's move, Olin. So 65% of an average day's move from the day's high for shorts, from the day's lows for longs. Um, the question, uh, one final question before we uh, think about uh, wrapping it up. Uh, so do you enter on a trade after a pullback on the one hour chart or the 15 minute chart? My initial entry is on the 89 tick chart. You can see the entry on the 15 minute chart as well. I want to try and get a tight, low risk trading opportunity, initially off the, my lowest entry time frame, on the off chance that we might get a runaway move. And in this market, that's highly likely at the moment, given the current volatility. Sometimes the moves are a little bit lazy. Again, today the moves are a little bit lazy. So there's a 15 minute chart, available, chart entry available. And also there's a 60 minute chart entry available. Again, think backwards. What time do you have available to trade? What time do you have available to trade? Um, price is in a small range. Yeah, so look at the 15 minute chart. Yeah, you can see, you very quite clearly says price is making high lows and lower highs within the previous swing high and the previous swing low. Price is consolidating. The move into the range is down. Move into consolidation is down, which suggests a continuation in price to the downside. Remember, these consolidation patterns, these are typically continuation patterns. And about 60 to 65% of the time, sorry, about 65, 70% of the time, uh, these uh, consolidation patterns continue uh, in the direction of the move into the consolidation. So the move into the direction is down 65%, 65, 70% of the time. These are continuation patterns. So this should continue down. So just to recap, typically I'll identify a range, an Asian range on the 60 minute charts with the price action definition. That's my preferred method. Preferred method. Mark off the extreme boundaries of support and resistance based on price action. What's the location of the range? Is that range in the top third or the bottom third of the previous day's high-low range? If it's in the top or the bottom third of the previous day's high-low range, it's in a good location. It's tradable. The next thing that I'm looking for is, although I've got a, a tradable pattern, is there potential for me to make money? It's all about greed, isn't it? At the end of the day, it's all about greed. Is there potential for me to make money? That potential is based on an average day's move. If price has exceeded an average day's move, no trade. Even if price is range bound, no trade. 
If price has done the majority of an average day's move, I'm thinking twice. Price has exceeded, if sorry, if price exceeds 65% of an average day's move, and price is still range bound. Wait, wait for a better trade opportunity. It might mean that you miss a move from time to time. So be it. That's just the way it is. I'd rather wait for a certainty than a possibility. Trade money, oh, sorry, trade entry is based on the first pullback after the breakouts. Stop loss goes past the highest point of the retracement after the breakouts. Targets and trade management. I'm looking for 100% of an average day's move, ideally. When price gets into 65% of an average day's move, I'm starting to actively manage the trade, um, which I'll go through in the second part of the session, uh, in a logical and mechanical fashion using the price action sequence behind the second previous swing high for shorts and swing low for longs. Right, folks, uh, I think that's it before we uh, call it a, a day for the session. Um, uh, Harley, if you go to the um, uh, my website again, if you follow any one of those links on the top left-hand side, you'll see live rooms or live trading room results. There's a breakdown of every trade I've done there. Um, but that's it, folks. That's the basically the price action sequence, assessing for potential, and uh, a breakout strategy. Breakout strategy. Have a look at any of the charts today. Most of them have developed this particular pattern today. Um, look for the direction bias on two 40-minute charts. Trade the direction of the breakout in line with the direction of the trend. So for example, pound yen, direction is down, price making lower highs, lower lows, short breakouts, breakout pullback setup, looking for an average day's move. Simple as that, folks. And I'll see you, uh, hopefully all of you, in part two.